if we use a function to create a Taylor series, there is no guarantee that the Taylor series will ever equal the function. That being said, most functions do equal their tails or series. We have to create a kind of artificial example if we want to see an example where they don't. So let's pick the example that's in the notes. Let me go ahead and share this screen. It's a piecewise defined function f of x equals zero when x equals zero, and this exponential thing when x is not equal to zero. And we claim that at x equals zero, not only does this function equal zero, but all of its derivatives equal zero. And that's not easy to show. It's easy to show that the first derivative equals zero just by finding the first derivative. But as the order of the derivative increases, the derivatives become very complicated. And it's hard to see this. Let's try to convince ourselves of this fact graphically. Here is the function. What is the derivative at zero? Well, it se certainly seems plausible given how close to being a horizontal line segment the function is here. It certainly seems plausible that the derivative at x equals zero is zero. And when we look at the derivative, that is the case. The derivative passes through the origin. Now, near the origin, the derivative looks like a horizontal line segment. It again seems very plausible that the slope of the tangent line here is zero. And that corresponds to the second derivative going through the origin, which does happen. Again, it looks like the tangent line is going to be horizontal, which corresponds to the third derivative being zero. It looks like the tangent line is going to be horizontal, which corresponds to the fourth derivative passing through the origin, and so on. All of these derivatives at the origin are zero. So all of the numerators in this Taylor series are zero. Zero divided by anything is still zero. Zero times x to the n is zero. So we're adding a bunch of zeros together. And this equals zero, where this could be a little confusing. When I say that it equals zero, I mean that it equals the zero function. g of x equals zero. So the Taylor series at zero, the McLaurin series, is a constant function. The function is zero. 
And let me get those notes back again. Clearly, this original function, the function we use to create this Taylor series, is not the zero function. In fact, this function only has a single root at the origin. So it is possible to create functions such that the function does not equal its own Taylor series. We'll discuss that a little more in the next section. Notice the y axis here. When we're looking at the first derivative, y is between negative 0.5 and 0.5. The second derivative, we go up to three. The third derivative, we go up to around 20. The fourth derivative, we go up to around 200. And we'll see that the derivatives growing fat quickly is related to the fact that the function is not equal to its Taylor series.